Welcome to Elance Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video I take delivery of a new vice for the milling machine. We'll take a look at the vice, see how we set it up on the mill and also look at some of the problems I have with the vice. I'll also give a top tip on how to keep the machine clean by making some simple trays. So let's go into the workshop see how we do it. I've had a parcel arrive, machine vice, so we'll have a look what this consists of. It's a vice for the milling machine. Rotary. There's a bit of play in that handle. This one's a hexagon handle, which will be useful because it means you could put a ratchet and a socket on the end. Plain jaws, four inch, hundred mil wide. Underneath, it's got a groove milled in with two holes that have been drilled and tapped. And you also get this couple of. Machined fit in the T slot on the milling machine so this can locate in the T slot so that it's square. That's the base. We machine all over there. Spin machine on the top edge here. Keyways into the vice there. So if you wanted to put the vice sideways on the milling machine, don't know why you'd need to do that. If anything, you would put them here. So I don't know why they just didn't carry on that across and put the keyway in there. Around the base here you have some degrees marked, the zero marks here. Just fitted the keys in the slot with these two screws. So now I'll fit this onto the milling machine and square the vice up. I was asked if I could show a full photo of the front of the machine. Well, I just can't physically do this because the lens on the camera is a standard lens. I haven't got a wide angle lens. The distance between this side of the workbench and this milling machine handle is two foot and the distance between this milling machine handle and the wall is probably five foot. So I can't get back far enough to get a full view of the milling machine from the front. This is a standard garage, it's about eight foot by fifteen foot. I've taken a picture of the machine handbook to give you an idea of the overall size. Well, the first thing I'm 
doing is to clean the table again, got the swarf off it. Remove the vise that I was using, which was a, a vise for a drill press. And I'm just fitting the bolts that came with the machine into the slide. I fitted the keyway underneath, so this is uh, a snug fit into the keyway. There's no, there's no play in the base. I'll just tighten these two bolts down. What I've done is I've sprayed some WD-40 onto the table before I fitted the vise. So there is oil underneath the vise so that in, in the future when I take that vise off I won't find a big rust mark. These are the bolts, the T bolts that came with the milling machine. These are too long but I don't want to cut these off yet in case I ever need a longer bolt. I can always get some shorter bolts to uh, do this because it stops the vise rotating on its base. One of the first jobs you need to do when, when you mount the vise is make sure that the vise jaws are tight. Tighten these up. What we'll do is hold the dial indicator in the spindle and we'll clock up the parallel strip held in the vise. I'm just putting an oil stone just across the corner of the, the vise jaws to take off any burrs. sharp edges and the slightest knock on this edge would create a burr on the face. This is the collet holder I purchased. It's uh, an ER20 collet holder on the end with an R8 shaft that's because I have a set of ER20 collets and to hold the dial indicator I'm just using the collet in the end when you fit this into the milling machine you have to line this keyway up with the spindle and just hold the collet in position while you tighten the drawbar up Fit a spanner to the collet holder to stop it turning and then a spanner on the drawbar and just nip it up. On the dial indicator I've fitted the dovetail piece which gives you I think it's an 8mm diameter. That will just push into the collet and just tighten that by hand. It doesn't need to be too tight because you're not going to put any pressure on that. The pressure is just going to be on the side of this. Now we can put the parallel strip in the vise and we're ready to measure. So this parallel strip sticks out each side of the vise. I've got a longer distance to measure to get it parallel and that should give me a true reading of the vice jaw at the back here. So the next thing I'll do is just set it roughly to the zero and the zero position on the, the bottom here looks about a degree out. It might just be a visual effect.
Another thing to look out for is if you fit your vise on the middle of the table you need to check what clearance you have at the back of the vise when you wind your table fully forward. That's fully forward and I've probably got an inch there so that will deal with most cutters if you're using a large surface milling cutter one with the inserts in it could be 50 millimeters so just bear in mind if you need to come down the side of a part otherwise you'd need to move your vise out to the next T-slot I'm just slackening the one bolt off on the right. Now I'm tapping the vise with the rubber mallet just to halve the error on the dial indicator. Nip the vise nut back up again, set the dial indicator to zero and retest. I think that's an area stocking get that but don't forget that one tenth of a thou over six inches so by using the parallel strip in the vise and clocking up on the side where the vise jaw is fixed you're extending the measurement range and the longer the parallel strip the more accurate you can get your vise set up square you see this parallel strip overhangs the vise an inch each side. Now I know the vise is parallel to the table but if you look at the setting on here it's showing it's at one degree out so when they made this vise and marked it then marked it one degree out. The next time I take the vise off I will clear the marking, reset the vise and then just put another mark on there to show the zero position. As a tip when you're cleaning your machine you can brush the swarf down to the end in the T-slots and then I've made this small tray you can take out with the swarf on to empty in the bin and it's just that shape. The outside shape is the same size as the hole that you have in the end of your table it just drops in. This part is just a bit higher so you can hold it to remove the tray. You can make one of those for each end just makes it a lot easier for cleaning the machine. So what's the difference between a milling vise and a drilling machine vise? Here's my drilling machine vise. So on this one you have V's machined in and across the center so you can hold a round bar in any of these V's. The top is slightly undercut so if you want to lift a piece of material up on a packing strip underneath as long as it comes above this piece you can still get in with a, a milling cutter to cut it. This jaw relies on the screw here to push it forward and backwards it's not as precise and it only slides on a small area of the, the bed of the vise. Well, if you look at the milling vise, the faces are flat. The bed of the vise is longer because it, it, this, this block here that holds the second jaw moves along the bed of the vise all the way along so you've got a lot longer area which gives you more stability. This vise you haven't got any holes in the bottom so any swarf produced stays on the on the vise. 
where if you go back to the other vice, if you're machining a very small piece of material, you unlock the vice, it drops down and it drops into the keyway, so it does get a problem then trying to get that out. If it's steel, you can use a little magnet. At least on this uh, milling vise, there is no gap in the vise, nothing falls through, everything's solid, so when you clean the vise, there's no swarf underneath that's gone into the T-slot. This vise is relatively cheap, I think I paid £55 for it. Normally they're about £70. I did notice that the date of manufacture was 2013, so it looks like old stock. And up to now, the only problem I found was that this mark is one degree out. I fitted the vise to the table and we've got the vice square to the table so all that remains now is for my milling cutters to arrive well that's it for today i hope that was useful hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on enots engineering <laughs>